Hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and today I'm going to show you the mesh and bobble stitch blanket. We're just going to work up a swatch so that you can um, understand how the stitches work and how you can add in the bobble. So what I want you to do is start with 22 chains. That is a pattern repeat of four plus two. So I've multiplied the number four times five and I got 20, and then I've added two. That will give you a nice base chain. So if you want to get creative and make your own blanket pattern, you can use that pattern repeat and make your blanket as wide as you would like. We are going to start with the mesh stitch rows. And so what we'll do is in the second chain from the hook, counting, never counting this one that's on the hook, counting the next one as number one and number two, and into that, we will work our first single crochet. And then we will chain one right after that. And then you skip the next stitch and single crochet into the next stitch. Now you will repeat this across the entire row. So I'm single crocheting and then I'm yarning over and doing a chain. I'm skipping the chain from below and working into the next one. This is really a great advanced beginner project that after you've really learned, um, you know, your single crochet and you really want to start um, branching out and learning other stitches, this is a fun one to do because it gives a lot of variety into the blanket and then the blanket itself is really pretty when it's finished. Okay, so I'm continuing to just single crochet, chain, skip one. This also is very, very similar to the moss stitch, or sometimes people call it the linen stitch. There are so many names for that. But this one is the mesh stitch, and I'll explain why it's different than the moss. Okay, so we're at the end of the row. There should be two left where you've chained, skip one, and you're going to single crochet into that very last space. Now simply chain one, turn your work, and right into the top of that single crochet that you just worked is where you'll place your first single crochet. So if you need to count again, it would still be in the second stitch from the hook. Here's the chain one turning chain, and then the next stitch right there you're going to Turn it to the side, look for underneath those V's, and work right into underneath the top of those, underneath those V's, and that is the first single crochet. Now, basically, all the mesh stitches is, is that you're continuing the same pattern. I'm chaining, and now I'm chaining over the chain from the row below, and I'm looking to only work into the tops of those single crochets or underneath the two V's. So how that is different than what's called a moss stitch is that the moss stitch has you work into underneath the chain spaces. So for this mesh stitch though, we are going right into the single crochets. So if you can think of it as the stitches basically are lining up on top of each other. Chains on top of chains, single crochets on top of single crochets. Oops. And I will say, as always, the first two rows of any project are always the trickiest, just because you don't have that many stitches established quite yet. Okay, I hope you've got enough light on this and you're seeing what I'm doing. Keeping everything nice and loose. There's that chain stitch and I just you probably, as you keep going, you're going to get into a really good rhythm. Single crochet, chain. Here we are to the end of the row. Almost, almost. Got one more. And this is one thing I do love about this pattern is that you will always end each row with a single crochet into the very last stitch. So it becomes little bit easier to make sure you hit that last stitch. Chain one and turn. 
Now this row should be much easier row to work. We're going to do the same thing. So again, I'm going to work in to the top of that single crochet and then I'm going to chain one and skip over that chain and work right into the top of that single crochet. Okay, I'm going to work this for about, I think, oh, I'll do six or so rows and then I'm going to pop back on here and I will show you the bobble stitch rows. Okay, so keep, get that built up. Why don't you do a um, total of six rows? That would be perfect. All right, I just finished the sixth row and how I can tell is that my uh, tail over here is on the right side of my work. So I know, because it, 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 it will get easier as you go to count the rows, but at first it's, it's a little bit tricky, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six. I kind of count these little, um, I don't know, posts, but it's hard to tell. Use a stitch marker if you're having trouble. Okay, so I'm on the last single crochet, and instead of completing the stitch all the way, I go ahead and place the new color over my hook, and I pull it through. Then I'm going to chain one with the new color and turn. Now we essentially work, we're still working with the mesh stitch. It's just one of the single crochets is going to be substituted with a bobble. So the very first stitch, let's work that single crochet, just like we've been doing before into the first single crochet. Then chain one and skip a chain. Now we will work our very first bobble. And basically it's a double crochet three together. So I'm yarning over, I'm inserting my hook underneath the two V's of that single crochet stitch. I'm yarning over and pulling up a loop, yarning over and just pulling through two. Then I'll yarn over again. I'm going to insert my hook right into the same space yarning over and pulling up a loop i'm yarning over and pulling through those just those first two hoops two loops now i have two double crochets this is my last one i'm doing it three times pulling over yarning and pulling through the first two loops now you should have four loops on your hook and you're going to yarn over and pull through all of them. That is your bobble. Now, if you are using different yarn that doesn't pop and you want more of a pop, then you can continue to make your double crochet four together or five together. It's completely up to you. Now, we are just going to chain one, just like we would have before, skip the next chain, and work your single crochet. And what that does is that it kind of makes the bobble pop right out to the back, just like that. Um, we're gonna chain one again. Always chain one over the chain one from the row below. And let's work another double crochet three together and get that bobble going. So if you can think of that, is that every other single crochet is replaced with a bobble stitch, then I think you won't be adding any stitches or anything. Now I'm chaining one, working over the chain, and then working right down into the top of that single crochet with a single crochet, still chaining one. Time for a bobble. So I'm going to work these all the way down the row. And like I said, you can do double crochet four together if you'd like. Um, just depends on the yarn that you've chosen. I, I kind of wanted more of a subtle flat look, so I'm not doing very many, just the three with this cotton. And also, I do want you to know though that why it's important to keep track of the number of rows that you do is because you want to make sure your bobbles 
stick out on the same side of the blanket. Okay, here we go. Last one. Oh, and let me give you another tip. When I told you about that pattern repeat and I multiplied it by the number five, it's pattern repeat is four plus two. Make sure you are multiplying the four by an odd number so that you will be able to end on a single crochet. You don't want to end on a bobble. Okay, so here we go. Now I am going to chain one and turn just like that. Now I'm going to put a mesh stitch row in between because like I said, I, I like my, my bobbles need to all stick out on the same side. And if I just did another row of bobbles, then I'd have bobbles going this way and bobbles going that way, which I have done blankets that way. And you, you still could do that. But for this specific pattern, we are having all the bobbles stay on one side. So I'm single crocheting. I'm chaining one. And this is where it might get a little confusing, but you've just kind of got to look and remember, okay, that's that chain one right there. I'm kind of looking for the larger V. That's the top of your bobble, and that's where you need to work your single crochet because we're still doing the mesh stitch pattern. Now this one should be easier because we're gonna work our single crochet into the top of the single crochet from the row below. It's just when you do those, you know, chaining, I want you to make sure you're hitting the right V's to work under. And they are a little bit bigger than the other ones. Then chain, work over there. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this. So maybe a, um, Something easy to remember is that when you are working, well, t uh, t let me get to the end of this row, sorry. I cannot crochet sometimes and talk at the same time. Okay, here we are to the last single crochet. I'm gonna do another row of bobbles for you. I'm chaining one and turning. And what I was going to say is maybe in as you go, you can always remember after you've turned your work, you'll know you you need to work a bobble row or you're you're going to get them on the same side of the blanket when your tail is over here on your left. That would be a help to know that that's where if if you choose not to use markers. Some people are really good at using stitch markers. Okay, here we go. I'm going to just line up those. Line up those little bobbles, just like that. Chain. So I hope you're getting into a good rhythm here. And honestly, that is the basics of this blanket. Um, feel free to click on in the descriptions there is a link and it will take you to this pattern and then you can make either the gray and yellow mesh stitch blanket or um, Hannah has one in um, beautiful pumpkin and gray and teal colors very pretty oops almost forgot to chain one and then work around so anyway that is the basics of this blanket just think of stitches worked in top into each other and I think you will you will have success. So thank you so much for stopping by Daisy Farm Crafts. We love to uh, share our what we're making. I'm just still in hopes to become a grandma and um, so anyway, Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to see, you know, the blanket patterns that we're coming up to with next or sign up for our newsletter on our website. Lots of different ways you could stay in touch with us. Come share your blanket with us on um, Instagram, tag it, hashtag Daisy Farm Crafts, and 
I'd love to share it. Look at those. Cute. I think I'll probably finish this up and make it like a little, um, I don't know. I always like to have these cotton things on hand for like little washcloths. Probably made this one a little bit small, but it's what good cotton is for. Okay, that's enough for me. We will see you next time. Thank you. I'm going to pop right back on here actually for a second because I remembered I got an email from a beginner and she asked me to show how we tie off our work and what that means. So it just basically means pull that last loop really fairly long. I like to leave tails that are, you know, six inches or so long or more because um, I like to thread a tapestry needle which has a really large eye with the, the yarn and I like to weave in the ends. So basically that's just tying off. You just un, you just cut it off and then you go back and you can weave in the ends any in any way that you want. It's basically in and out and around and there is no right or wrong way to do this other than you want to try and disguise your stitches as best you can and work them in and around as many times as you can in order to get them secure. Now I will kind of, um, also depends on the type of yarn I'm using, probably going to pay a little bit closer attention to cotton because it's, it's a little bit slipperier than if I was using a chunky wool. I, I feel like on a chunky wool, I wouldn't have to weave the ends in and around as much. But on this cotton, I really want to make sure they're secure. And this is the securest way to do your ends. Um, there was a time where I just would crochet over my ends as after I changed a color. But I did, um, after I gave that blanket to my niece and I saw it after she'd played with it and, you know, it went through the wash and every one of those ends were hanging out. So that convinced me that taking the time to weave in my ends was totally worth it. So another tool for crochet is to make sure you pick up some of these super large eye tapestry needles. They're very, very handy. And hopefully you've just been able to watch me work back and forth, back and forth. And honestly, you really can't see those ends. I clip them off and then I'm done. And, that, and I have not had problems with it ever since then. So. There you go, there is your bobble and mesh stitch. And I have a feeling you might want to, well, as your bl blanket gets bigger, maybe you'll want to do five together, I don't know. It's totally up to you. I like the flat look though for, for little babies, and especially with cotton. Okay, now I'm done.